Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to share with you some new filters for deep sky astrophotography that might catch your eye especially if you're using a monochrome camera or just think about switching to mono. So in particular I got Scorpio LRGB filters and Scorpio SHO filters for narrowband imaging and uh, in the video I'm going to unbox these filters, I'm going to show you uh, what you get in the box, how everything looks like, uh, what side of the filter you should use since I got 36 millimeter unmounted filters so they don't have threads but there is pretty easy way to uh, mount the filters into the filter wheel and uh, we're gonna look at some exposures of course and uh, some like final images that you can get using it so let's dive into the video guys first let's cover what these filters are all about so as I already mentioned I got Scorpio LRGB filter set and we got luminance red green and blue filters that you want to use for taking any broadband image such as images of galaxies, star clusters or probably reflection nebulae. Then I got narrowband filters, sulfur 2, hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 and in particular I got 5 nanometer uh, bandpass versions. All these filters they have 36 millimeter unmounted size and this is how it looks like. By the way I have two oxygen 3 filters and I'm going to explain you why in a second but yep packaging looks pretty simple we got just a bit of foam as a protection the filter is covered in plastic foil from both sides overall this is how packaging looks like now talking about uh, the size so all these filters they have 36 millimeter unmounted design and all of them already installed on my uh, top tech 7 position filter wheel and the 36 millimeter size is good for relatively large sensors like the IMX571 that I have on my new TopTech camera. So this is all about packaging and uh, the filter design. Now let's take a look at examples of images you can get with this Scorpio LRGB and SHO filters. So as my first example I got these images of the Orion Nebula captured through LRGB filters. Uh, now, this is relatively low integration time per each channel, so I got just 15 minutes of total exposure time per each RG and B filters with 15 seconds of sub-exposure. For L filter, I actually got two sets of images. One is 10 second exposures with 10 minutes of total integration time, and my second set of images with L filter, I got uh, two minute exposures and 20 minutes of total integration time. Now, as you can see, the core of the Orion Nebula is well overexposed, but I got um, some details for the rest part of the image. And uh, for my 10 minutes of total exposure time, I got more details on the core of the Orion Nebula, so that was the goal. Um, now, there is nothing like really interesting that I can show you guys for each set of these images as overall I believe these LRGB filters they perform exactly as intended. The only thing let's look at like bright stars. So this is how brighter stars look like. Let me know what you think in the comment section below I guess guys. Uh, this is how RGB image looks like. So only red, green and blue channels they combined. Uh, this is unprocessed image and unstretched yet. So once again, like this is how stars in particular look like. And also I'm gonna upload these stacks either on Google Drive or somewhere on Cloud Online. So guys, you, if you're interested, you can take a look at these images yourself. And um, this is what I got as my final result with the Orion Nebula. So total integration time here is just 1 hour and 15 minutes. Pretty low integration time, but I'm personally happy with the result I got considering uh, that low integration. So this is what I got with Missia 42. But what I want to show you guys is this image of M101 Galaxy. This is also unprocessed image, just RGB channels combined and I got four hours of exposure time per each channel and on like longer exposures what I noticed is my stars appear to be bigger through red filter I don't know what is the reason of that but this is definitely something that I want to show you guys and of course like uh, things like that are easily fixable on post-processing stage but if it's crucial for you I don't know guys but 
Considering the price, I think the filters perform well. Talking about the price, this LRGB filter set sells for 186 US dollars plus small fee for shipping for a 36 millimeter version. They also got two inch filters for 200 US dollars. And what I want to briefly look here at is filter specs that seller claims. And uh, in particular, we got optimized halos for filters, which is actually true as you saw in my images of the Orion Nebula. Like surroundings around bright stars, they look good for all R, G, and B, and actually L filter as well. Uh, filters, these filters are actually par focal, which is true. So here I got my image of Capella star taken through a button of mask. And as you can see, each layer here represents every filter that I got in the set. So what I was doing, I was switching filters and taking exposures without changing the uh, position of the focuser. So this is how luminance filter looks like. Then we got red filter, green filter, and blue filter. And as you can see, the middle spike didn't change its position based on the filter, which is good. That says that the filter is indeed parfocal. However, when we look at RGB image, that's what I want to show you guys here, is that, yes, the middle spike looks good. However, let me just quickly do the following. So middle spikes look good, this spike and this one looks good. However, the other one here and here, you can see that we got red filter and spikes on the red filter slightly shifted. And that's actually, I believe, the same thing that I see on my images of M101, where uh, you kind of could see some like red hues around stars. And it seems like red filter, at least on my sample set, produces a bit larger stars that uh, lead to these um, halos. As I already mentioned, it's kind of easy to fix in the post-processing stage. However, it's something that you might want to consider. Uh, but it, once again, considering the price of the filters and that they are focal and talking about other specs, I don't know actually if those specs are true or not, but considering the price, overall, everything looks good. And uh, talking about the specs such as like max transmittance for the filter, it says at 95%, while different filters, they might go either the same or a bit lower. Uh, the only person I know on YouTube that can actually test these filters and get true specs out of them is Quip the Lazy Geek. So if he gets any chance to work with the filters, I personally look forward to watching his video. But that's all I got uh, for you guys. What we can do is just look at the specs and uh, show images. And then uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys what you think about these filters. So I want you in comment section below to discuss them. And now let's take a look at my images taken through SHO filters by Scorpio. So this is how my SHO filters images look like. Of course, in hydrogen alpha, we got a lot of information. This is how oxygen looks like. This is how sulfur looks like. And same idea here, guys. I'm going to post uh, these tags on cloud. So I let you take a closer look at these images. And this is how my processed result looks like. So there is three hours of total integration time, one hour per each channel. I'm personally happy with it. And uh, once again, this is, as manufacturer claims, 5 nanometer bandpass filter. Uh, I didn't check, as I have no tools to check if it's true 5 nanometer bandpass or if it's like wider a bandpass, is like 6 or 6.5 uh, nanometers, as for example with uh, SV Boyne, I believe they have 5 nanometer bandpass filters, and as Quiff uh, the Lazy Geek tested, they, it's not really true 5 nanometer bandpass filters, they're slightly wider. I don't know if it's exactly the same case with uh, Scorpio filters, but this is results that you can get uh, using them. At least that's what I got. And finally, what I want to quickly show you is the performance of 5 nanometer SHO Scorpio filters on bright stars. In particular, I was interested in pointing my telescope towards the Horsehead Nebula. So these three images just like one hour of total integration time with 10 minute exposure of each subframe. This is how hydrogen looks like. Of course, <laughs> there is lots of details information about it. Uh, this is the close up on Alnitak. 
the star looks pretty good, I believe. Now, this is the most interesting part. Oops, not that. This one. So this is how Alnitak looks like through oxygen tree filter. Of course, we can see some halo and uh, it's kind of hard to fully eliminate halos through oxygen filters. Once again, considering the price and it's five nanometer, as manufacturing claims, uh, filter, I wouldn't say it's really that bad as, for example, I've taken images of the horse cat nebula through different filters and I've seen worse results with uh, halos around Alnitag. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's ideal, but still something that you can work with. And this is how Alnitag looks like through Sulfur 2 filter. And this is once again Hydrogen Alpha filter. So, yep guys, if you're interested in like either taking a really close look at all these images that I've shown you, or if you're interested in even trying processing these images, uh, you'll find all the links in the description to the video, and uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think about the performance of these filters. Now let me quickly explain why I have two oxygen tree filters. So this filter I actually received originally with this filter set, and uh, the filter itself like um, sulfur 2 and hydrogen alpha, they performed well, no issues whatsoever. However, this filter had, and I'm gonna show it to you in a second, uh, on the left bottom corner, kind of a highlighted area that, as I understand it, and as manufacturing explained to me, is related to uh, not good quality of coating on the filter. As as I already mentioned, uh, this, all these filters, they're samples, and uh, there might be issues with filters, so, Manufacturer updated the filter, made it better, and sent me an updated version of the filter uh, to test. The updated version has no issues, and as I was told by the manufacturer, all the production versions of these oxygen tree filters, they should be good in terms of uh, quality of coating, and uh, this is just a little trophy that I got <laughs> while testing the filters, basically. And let's briefly look at the seller's page. So as you can see, we can get this SHO filter set in particular 5 nanometer version for 361 US dollars or you can get these filters individually and of course the price for per filter if you get it individually will be higher. Uh, talking about spec, seller claims that this filter is a parfocal and personally guys I didn't test this feature for these filters yet. Uh, what's interesting about these filters is that max transmittance set at 97% for hydrogen alpha and sulfur 2 filters and as you can see here we got uh, some test reports, I guess, from one of the filters from Scorpio. Hydrogen Alpha looks like that. This is how Sulfur 2 filter looks like. And Oxygen 3 transmittance rate is lower. We got it at like somewhere between 91 and 93%, which is still looks good. So optical density here is uh, above 4. Filters are hard-coated, easy to clean. And the other interesting feature of this filter that I want to cover is that Seller claims this filter support telescopes as fast as f2.8, which is also good. And overall, that's all about uh, these filters that I want to cover for this video, guys. Now let me quickly show you how you need to position the filter in the filter wheel. So. When it comes to narrowband filters, it's pretty straightforward and the reflective side goes towards the telescope, the opposite side goes towards the camera. And as you can see it here, like this is more reflective side. And the other side has kind of this uh, dark edge. This is the actual the part of the filter itself and you can see it from here. And uh, this side goes towards the camera, the more reflective side goes towards the telescope. Same idea works for RGB filters from Scorpio. So this is uh, the green filter, guys. And um, what do you think about this side? Does it go towards the telescope or towards the camera? And if you responded towards the camera, you're absolutely right. So as you can see, we got this dark edge over here. And if we flip the green filter, then this side is more reflective and this side goes towards uh, the telescope. And if you look at the luminance filter, then you'll see this edge 
on both sides. However, the telescope side is going to have red hue and the camera side is going to have some greenish hue. And basically the picture you see on the screen now illustrates how the L filter looks like on the telescope and on the camera side. Alright guys, that was a quick look at Scorpio LRGB and 5nm SHO filters. Uh, well, let me know what you think about them in the comment section down below. I personally think that these filters, they look pretty promising and uh, as manufacturer says, they continue to improve the quality of the filters. So, considering the price, everything looks, as I said, pretty promising and we'll see how it goes in the future. The only thing, if you decide getting this filter before purchasing, consider that red filter, at least in my case, has some halos around bright stars and uh, Oxygen 3 filter, my original version that I had, it had some issues with coating. However, updated version of Oxygen 3 filter, 5mm band pass version, had no issues whatsoever, which is good. And uh, Scorpio, they also offer different size for the filter. So, for example, LRGB also available at 2 inch size, and SHO filters available at 2 inch size as well, 5mm band pass filters. Scorpio also makes 3 nanometer band pass filters. And as I'm aware, they also work on 7 nanometer band pass filters. Anyway, all the links to these filters will be in the description down below. If you're interested, go ahead and check them out. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider giving it a like. Also, leave a supportive comment in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the future videos, guys. And until next time, clear skies.